topic today um, about environmental and nutritional diseases and it should be mentioned that many diseases are caused or influenced by environmental factors. Broadly defined, the term ambient environment encompasses the various outdoor, indoor and occupational settings in which humans live and work. In each of these settings, the air people breathe, the food and water they consume and the toxic agents they are exposed to are major determinants of health. Other environmental factors pertain to the individual and include tobacco use, alcohol ingestion, therapeutic and recreational drug, drug consumption, diet and uh, the like. It is generally believed that factors in the personal environment have a larger effect on human health than that of the ambient environment, but new friends related to global warming uh, may change this equation. The term environmental disease refers to disorders caused by exposure to chemical or physical agents in the ambient workplace and personal environments, including diseases of nutritional origin. Environmental diseases are surprisingly common. The International Labour Organization has estimated that work-related injuries and illnesses kill more people per, per year globally than do road accidents and wars combined. Most of these work-related problems are caused by illnesses rather than accidents. The burden of disease in the general population created by non-occupational exposures to toxic agents is much more difficult to estimate, mostly because of the diversity of agents and the difficulties in measuring the dose and duration of exposures. Whatever the precise numbers, environmental diseases are major causes of disability and suffering and constitute, constitute a heavy financial burden, particularly in developing countries. Environmental diseases are sometimes the consequence of major disasters, such as the methyl mercury contamination in Minamata Bay in Japan in the 1960s, the leakage of methyl isocyanide uh, gas in Bhopal, India in 1984, the Chernobyl nuclear accident in 1986, the Fukushima nuclear meltdown following the tsunami in 2011, and lead poisoning, poisoning resulting from contaminated drinking water in the city of Flint in the United States in 2016. Fortunately, these are unusual and infrequent occurrences. Less dramatic but much more common are diseases and injuries produced by chronic exposure to relatively low level of contaminants. It should be noted that a host of factors including complex interactions between pollutants producing multiplicative effects, as well as the age, genetic predisposition and different tissue sensitivities of exposed persons create wide variations in individual sensitivity. Disease related to malnutrition is even more per pervasive. In 2010, it was estimated that 925 million people were malnourished one in every seven persons worldwide. Children are disproportionately affected by undernutrition, which accounts for more than 50% of childhood mortality worldwide. Today we will first consider the emerging problem of the health effects of climate change. We will later discuss the mechanisms of toxicity of chemical and physical agents and address specific environmental disorders, including those of nutritional origin. Global temperature measurements show that the Earth has warmed significantly since the early 20th century and especially since the mid-1960s. Record-breaking global temperatures have become common with 2005, 2010, 2014 and 2015 each setting successive high temperature records. Of note, um, 15 of the 16 warmest years since 1880 has occurred during the 21st century. During 2015, the global land temperature was um, 0.9 um, centigrade warmer than the 20th century average. Mean global ocean temperatures also set new record in 2015 with an annual average temperature 
of 0.74 centigrade, degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. 2016 is on track to approach or exceed the records just set in 2015. And 2020 became the second warmest year on record. The rise in atmospheric and ocean temperatures have led to a large number of effects that include changes in storm frequency, drought and flood, as well as large-scale ice losses in Greenland and Antarctica and the vast majority of the other glaciated regions on Earth, as well as dramatic thinning or disappearance of Arctic Ocean sea ice as shown on the picture. The melting of land-based glacial ice and the thermal expansion of the warming oceans has produced approximately 80 mm of global average sea level rise since 1993 and the sea level currently is rising at a global average rate of 3.5 mm per year. Although politicians quibble among scientists, there is the general acceptance that climate change is at least in part man-made. The culprit is the rise in atmospheric level of greenhouse gases, particularly carbon dioxide, released through the burning of fossil fuel fuels, as uh, shown on the picture, as well as ozone, which is an important air pollutant, um, and methane. These gases, along with water vapor, produce the so-called greenhouse effect by absorbing energy radiated from Earth's surface that otherwise would be lost into space. The annual average level of atmospheric carbon dioxide, about 401 in 2015, was higher that, than in, at any point in approximately six 150,000 years and without changes in human behavior is expected to increase 1,200 by the end of the century, levels not experienced for 10 of million, millions of years. The health consequence of climate change will depend on its extent and rapidity. The severity of ensuing consequences and humankind's ability to mitigate the dam damaging effects. Even in the best-case scenario, however, climate change is expected to have a serious negative impact on human health by increasing the incidence of a number of diseases, including the following cardiovascular, cerebr cerebrovascular and respiratory diseases, all of which will be exacerbated by heat waves and air pollution. Gastroenteritis, cholera and other food and water bone infection disease, infectious diseases caused by contamination as a consequence of floods and disruption of clean water supplies and sewage treatment after heavy rains and other environmental diseases. Vector-borne infectious diseases such as malaria and dengue fever resulting from changes in vector number and geographic distribution related to increased temperatures crop failures and more extreme weather variations. Malnutrition caused by changes in local climate that disrupt crop production. Such changes are anticipated to be more severe in tropical locations in which average temperatures may already be near or above crop tolerance levels. It is estimated that by 2080, agricultural productivity may decline by 10 to 25 percent in some developing countries as a consequence of climate change. Beyond these disease-specific effects, it is estimated that the melting of glacial ice, particularly in Greenland and other parts of the Northern Hemisphere, combined with the thermal expansion of warming oceans, will raise sea levels by 2 to 6 feet by 2100. Approximately 10% of the world population, roughly 600 million people, live in low-lying areas that are at risk for flooding, even if the rise in ocean levels is at the low end of these estimates. For example, a rise in sea level by 1.5 feet will submerge 70% of the landmass of Maldives Islands by 2100 and a free foot rise will inundate 100% all of the islands by 2085. 
The resulting displacement of people will disrupt lives and commerce, creating conditions ripe for political unrest, war and poverty, the vectors of malnutrition, sickness and death. Worldwide recognition of the catastrophic effects of climate change led in late 2015 to a historic meeting of 196 countries in Paris, France, in which the participating countries agreed to the following 